っきょうだいだeveryone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today, uh, continuing the reviews of ships that are in the shipyard that I haven't reviewed yet, we come to this, the Musashi, the Tier 9 Yamato. Well, it's not quite as simple. So the original Musashi obviously was the sister ship of the Yamato and um, rather similar. She was lost uh, pretty much with, well, not with all hands, but with most of the um, with most of the sailors during the Battle of the Philippines, the last big battle, the last big sortie the Japanese did against the American pressure, and when they tried to prevent the Americans from landing in the Philippines, because the Japanese knew very well that once they lost, they lost the Philippines and they lost the. Uh, their access, their trade routes, and access to the re to the resources in Southeast Asia, that well, they wouldn't be able to use their ships anymore. So they may as well use them, trying to defend it. It was a a, a last effort, really. And the Musashi was part of the center force. So the uh, the Japanese had a relatively complicated plan. 
as is traditional for the Japanese, they were relative, They were very low on carrier airplanes. So they sent a carrier force up north around to try and attract the attention of the American, uh, the American protection of the landing forces and try to draw them out. And they sent their heavy surface units through the center and uh, around south in an attempt to well once once the covering once the covering forces were uh, were withdrawing uh, ch chasing the carriers up in the north then the idea was that battleships and cruisers would break through in the center and would take out the landing craft and everybody and and well everything the, the remainder there that didn't quite work so well because first of all the carrier force in the north that they wanted to be found wasn't found the battleship force in the center that they didn't want to be found was found so uh, losing after losing uh, I think it was the Maya to a submarine and also being spotted they came under relatively heavy air attack and the Musashi herself was hit multiple times by the various carriers around SX class so yeah tier 9 it's not completely off uh, she, she was to hit with like 19 bombs or something and uh, a, a somewhat similar amount of torpedoes so it was a huge uh, she, they were fighting hard to keep her afloat but in the end she was taking on so much water that uh, they couldn't counter flood anymore she was uh, listing too much she was capsizing and uh, going down and that was the relatively unspectacular ending for the Musashi and uh, just, le just leaving the Yamato as the remaining Yamato-class battleship, who then met a somewhat similar fate in uh, the Tengo final suicide mission. So, yeah, Yamato-class battleship, right? What does that mean for us in-game? Well, um, let's compare the two. Let's uh, have a look, and I've I've got them both I've got them both set up so we can so we can compare the. Uh, uh, the Musashi has a comparable comparable hull to the Yamato, which makes sense given that it's a Yamato class. She's got slightly uh, slightly less hit points and uh, a little bit less torpedo damage reduction. In terms of maneuverability, there isn't much to say. It's pretty much similar. The Musashi is a little bit slower on uh, on the acceleration, but uh, other than that, and on the turn. But other than that, it's it's quite similar. So, dreadful. <laughs> the guns. Now, this is kind of the intriguing part, right? You're thinking, oh, I'm going to get 460mm main guns in Tier 9. So, I'm going to get into Tier 8 battles. And I'm going to be smashing everything. On paper, at least by designation, these are the exact same guns as on the Yamato. In practice, they're not. They have a longer reload with over 23 seconds. They have a shorter range than the Yamato's guns, and they do less damage, although albeit slightly, than the Yamato's guns. That said, they also do get, enjoy the 300% Citadel damage that you get with these very large guns. The Musashi still has the wing secondaries, which I think, and I'm not super sure about this, I'm going to have to look it up, but I think, from what I remember, they were later removed and replaced with AA. But she still has four triple turrets of the 155mm secondaries. The Yamato only has the two, forward and aft, and gets uh, gets more AA and auto secondaries on, on, the, on the side here, whereas the Musashi still has the wing secondaries. So she does get the somewhat larger, a somewhat larger amount of secondary guns. And in return she gets fewer of the auto secondaries, the 127 mils. The, where the Yamato gets 12 twins, the Musashi only gets 6. And, as I mentioned, anti-air. The Musashi's AA is meh. <laughs> For a tier 9 battleship, um, that, that, is, that is not much. So you can be happy if you shoot one or two or three planes down, but that's about it. You're not going to defend yourself against aircraft. So she's kind of like a Nelson in that regard. Um, definitely not. Whereas the Yamato has a... I mean, not American level, but somewhat decent anti-air. And concealment-wise, uh, they are similar. The, the slightly lower value here is because of the camo. So, still, the question remains. Tier 9 is, is it, can be a difficult tier. Uh, does it make sense 
to get the Musashi? Is it worth getting the uh, get, getting the Yamato's guns for potentially tier 8 battles? As you may have noticed from the intro to this video, uh, this is one of the worst ships I've ever reviewed, in my personal opinion. Uh, I, I know that I say that there are no really bad ships, but this one makes a lot of trade-offs. So for once, the matchmaking uh, is cursed. And this might just be my bad luck, but I've played about 20 battles in this thing, and I think I had two battles where I was top tier. Every other single battle was a tier 10 battle. So, and not just not just over the course of an hour, a course of several days. So, matchmaking wise, it doesn't work quite quite that well. Uh, the armor I find is questionable. Montanas are doing an insane amount of damage to my ship, and even though I I have set her up with a fire defense build, she takes a lot of fires. <laughs> uh, the I mean, she has a 12.5% fire and flooding resistance, which isn't much, but she floods and gets set on fire absolutely without stop. So what do we have? And again, what do we have? We have a tier 9 Yamato with less good guns, with, uh, with actually, without any ship skills. She doesn't get the precise aiming that the Yamato gets. The Yamato gets... Uh, three, precise aiming two. So if you play the Yamato at maximum range with the precise aiming and the respective captain skills, you can make use of this of this heavy artillery quite successfully. With the Musashi, you cannot quite do that. I have put the main battery mod three in here to get the dispersion down a little bit, again, because she doesn't get the precise aiming skill. I have the deck protection mod one, and it seems to make almost no difference. She does get, I mean, the ship's huge, right? Look at this thing. This is massive. She's a massive target. It's almost impossible to miss her. And she gets set on fire like, like no tomorrow. And I do have this steering in slot three because again, uh, <laughs> what are you gonna do? You do have to maneuver a little bit. Kind of the only thing that some, somewhat works in the Musashi is if you stand all the way back and use your guns to their maximum range uh, which is 14.7 kilometer is not that great. Again, the Yamato uh, has a one kilometer more range, so you will be outranged by tier 10 battleships mostly. And um, yeah, but but that's kind of the only thing that works really, because anything else she melts super quickly under fire. I have put a just a level nine commander in here uh, with a standard setup with a fire prevention build. And um, I have set him for the marksman skill because I would assume that if you get the Musashi, you would use it as a you would want to use it as a captain trainer. And uh, all the Japanese tech tree ships have the precise aiming skill, whereas the Musashi does not. I have not gone and gotten the APCS on this because I figured that most people don't necessarily have a high t high level captain who can make use of that. So would you, if you put I his the historical camo on, you get a bit more hit points, a bit more range, you get better dispersion. Yes, so that kind of, again, gives us a bit of a hint that uh, this would compensate for some of these problems. But um, again, this is a tier nine, this is a tier nine premium and the historical camouflage is 5,000 gold. Not everybody has 5,000 gold laying around and you don't, it doesn't come with that out of the shipyard. So what does it come with? Well, let's, uh, again, you've, you've seen this on, my, on the intro, but, um, I'll show you one of the better battles I've had today. So of course, like I said, it's a tier 10 battle again. We've got uh, Haku, Yamato, Monty, Hinburg, Worcester, Schemann, Kiev. A pretty good mixed setup. We're playing in counter. And let's see where we can position ourselves. And yeah, we, we don't want to rush too, too much forward and um, get take point or anything like, like that. You, you do need to stay behind in this ship. Uh, in, in center cups, this is a really big problem oftentimes because you can't actually push forward with the other battleships and get in, into the front. Okay, Shima seems to be going left flank. Then I'm going to support there because it looks like the rest of our team is heading, is concentrating right side. Ca enemy carrier is concentrating right as well. And our, our midway is scouting throughout the middle. 
So we're gonna get one destroyer, maybe one cruiser on the left flank here, maybe one battleship. Um, so it's either Hindenburg or Worcester. Obviously I'd prefer Hindenburg, but um, we'll, we'll see what comes. Okay. And we're just gonna follow Shima. Okay, something spotted. That's one of the battleships over there. And it doesn't seem to be pushing. Because you do get three three enemy ships spawning on this side, but it looks like that battleship there isn't gonna be pushing. So let's see if we can distract him a little bit. Unless there's more stuff. Okay, our Shima is probably spotted. Uh, by it's probably air spotted. So Montana is over there. Okay, there's enemy Shima. And someone's sneaking around the side. Yeah, I knew this was gonna happen. Okay, I'm obviously spotted at this point, and uh, yeah, it's the Worcester. Okay, now let, let's see what we can do at, what is this, 10, 10, 11 kilometers against the Worcester. Forward guns only, because we do need to stay bow in, uh, that's three hits, no citadels, but we need to stay bow in uh, because uh, Shima Torps might be in the water. And now, of course, the Worcester is going to set us on fire. So I'm going to back up and reverse and see if I can get some support here, because the Shima who was scouting is actually going to... Yep, there's the first fire, not gonna damage con yet. There's the second fire, so now it's time for damage control. Okay, some more shots out at the Worcester. I'm actually gonna switch to high explosive here because I'm getting rushed by a Shimakaze. And uh, no one is here to defend this flank. <laughs> the other Shima is buggered off, and the carrier is busy elsewhere. So it's just me and, that and, me and Shima here. Okay, so he's trying to rush me, I'm reversing. I'm the 23 second reload, I'm just going to get one shot at this. So I'm gonna, I, he's trying to bait my, my main guns out. But um, I'm just going to stick with the secondaries for now. And come on, come on, come on. Is he turning? Okay, at this point I'm going to need to send. Okay, that's, that's four hits, not enough. Uh, but we've got, uh, I've got two fires burning on him. Oh, where are these torpedoes going? Okay, sure. Uh, I'll take it. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, are we gonna are we gonna take one torp, maybe two torps? Well, of course she's flooding again. Two torps and she's and she's got a ton of flood. <laughs> unsurprising. And of course she's on fire again from the Worcester. So where is Shima? Where are you? Main guns are reloaded, but I've got the HE. I don't want to waste it on the Worcester. Uh, okay, I can damage con, uh, which means I'm gonna get another another perma fire any second now. But. Um, Okay, back to the AP, let's see if I can do something about Worcester. Have I hit the Shima? Of course not at this range. Completely impossible to hit anything with this. Okay, fine. At least I get some support here on the flank. And the Kiev has joined as well. Uh, we're already down half health and the battle is even half through. And we've done about 16,000 points of damage. Okay. Uh, now everyone's shooting AG at me again, of course. But I can't get any closer because there are destroyers over there. And uh, looks like Worcester took one Torp. Or maybe two. Uh, Kiev, are you coming my way? Okay, one hit, one citadel on the Worcester. You do, uh, you, you can one-shot a Worcester in this thing, theoretically. It's just practically. <laughs> it's a different question. Um, I, I did mention in, uh, earlier that the guns are not quite as good as I wanted them to be. So even against broadside and cruisers, I often, um, I often don't get a huge amount of damage. Okay, is he turning under the shots? Uh, okay, one hit, two hits. There was one. Of, there was a semi pen. And uh, and two fulls on a on a fully broadsiding Worcester. So and in meanwhile we're on fire. Okay, Shima is around here somewhere. So okay, these are probably Shima torps. Uh, how many am I going to take? One, two, maybe. I'm not going to use the damage con because I'm most likely going to get the flooding again. Yep, there we go. Okay, <laughs> that's what I was waiting for. Was one Shima torp. Uh, okay, but I've got my rear turrets pointed at the Worcester. So let's get another shot out. And that was a bit far. Oh, it's turned underneath. Okay. The the shells have a relatively lo long flight time. They do hang a little in the air a little bit, so you do have to be careful. Another semi pen on the Worcester. Uh, you see at these range. Okay, it's it's a highly it's a maneuvering cruiser. But even against battleships, I'm I'm struggling to um, I'm struggling to penetrate. I I've had point blank engagements with um, fully broadsiding Isomos, and I've only done semi pens. And a semi and a full. Let's see if we can do some more damage against the Worcester from here. Because, okay, that's three more full pens. And the carrier probably takes them out. Yep, yeah, okay, so Worcester's down. All right, then. That leaves Shima. Uh, Shima's buggered off. So, mm, yeah, I've still got one heal. Let's uh, let's head back again on, um, back on the, on the high explosive. And let's head back this way. Yep, I'm seeing him. Nope, these were misses. 
And there come some more carrier planes. And I'm out of heals and I'm out of damage gone, so... <laughs> oh, it could possibly go wrong. And my AA is not going to do a great amount. Well, it looks like... Uh, it looks like the, the fighters have done a decent job. Oh, we shot something down. Nice. And we got lucky. No hits from the from the planes. Okay, that's one hit on the Shima. Sec two hits I would have gotten her. Come on. Can I get the second one out? It's in secondary range. There's actually a lot of secondaries. Oh, okay, but yeah, uh, our Shima takes them out just a second before mine hit. Okay, back to the armor piercing. Uh, where are the... How are we on points? Okay, we are... Identical on points. We've got 40 seconds left. There's a there's a hidden book. So I have to both not die. And can I sink? No, I don't think I can sink the Hindi at, uh, at this rate. But uh, let's push up. See if we can do some more damage. Okay, fully broadsiding Hindenburg. Uh, 10 kilometers. Shot out. Shots out. Let's see how many how many we get in. Oh, that's not bad. Six um, six hits. But uh, no citadels. Couple of semis. Uh, and you see that that's that, that's my my problem with this with this ship really, is that um, the guns are okay. I get some more okay, some more plane hits. The guns are okay, but there's way not. They, they remind me reminding me a bit of the Nelson's guns. They are not as punchy as they should have been. But got another plane kill. But um, yeah, fifty one thousand, and we did get the Normatudon because we did burn through all three heels and uh, and we still did over 50,000 points of damage. So, um, the Musashi. Personally, I don't know. I haven't played the Yamato yet, but I've seen Yamatos do crazy amounts of damage, and I just don't see the ship doing that. Um, maybe this is one of those ships where you really need to have the historical camo and you need to have a fully trained captain in order to, to do well. But... In my experience, most of the time you end up in uh, you you end up in tier ten games. I don't know why that is. Maybe I was just unlucky. Maybe there's not enough players. But um, I, I I've had one or maybe two tier eight, uh, tier eight games where or tier nine games where I was in. Uh, yeah, you can't you can't tank a position with the ship. You can't brawl in the ship. He's not maneuverable enough, and she's not very great at range either uh, but it's still the most viable playstyle to stand back uh, shoot at max range and um, you know scare people with the big guns I guess <laughs> you know to try to try to get them to just by your sheer presence not come any closer but uh, other than that uh, definitely not a ship that I personally would get so Maybe this is me. Maybe there is a secret way of playing the Musashi. Maybe I've just been unlucky. Uh, maybe there are some of you out there who say, no, I've, I've had great games in the Musashi. I would love to see one. But for me personally, uh, not a ship that I'm particularly interested in getting out of the shipyard. That's it for me today. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye.